Imagine a world where everyone was a small business owner, where every neighborhood had its own unique character and charm, and where local businesses were the lifeblood of communities. Small businesses do so much more than just contribute to the economy. They provide jobs, support families, and add to the vibrancy of our daily lives. In the United States alone, there are approximately 30 million small business owners, each with their own unique stories and journeys. Whether you're just starting out or seeking inspiration from other small business owners, there's a wealth of knowledge and experience to be gained. But where do you begin? How do you navigate the ups and downs of entrepreneurship, and how do you build a successful business that's tailored to your unique strengths and passions? That's where this video comes in, a starter kit designed to provide practical, actionable advice for anyone looking to become a self-made boss. So, if you're ready to take the leap and join the ranks of small business owners around the world, get ready to learn invaluable lessons that can help you create the business of your dreams. From the basics of starting a business to creating buzz through word of mouth, this video has everything you need to get started. Let's dive in and explore the world of small business together. Chapter 1. Once upon a time, in a bustling city, there was a young man named Jack who had a burning passion for starting his own business. He had always dreamt of being his own boss and having the freedom to make his own decisions. But he had no idea where to start or how to get the resources he needed. One day, while scrolling through social media, Jack stumbled upon a post that caught his eye. It was about free business resources that were available to entrepreneurs all over the world. Jack was intrigued and decided to do some research. He soon discovered that there was a branch of the Small Business Administration in his area, and it was completely free to access. He couldn't believe it. The SBA offered workshops, loans, mentors, and much more to help entrepreneurs like him get their businesses off the ground. Jack wasted no time and made an appointment with the SBA representative in his city. The representative was friendly and helpful, and Jack felt like he was in good hands. He spent hours with the representative, workshopping his idea and drawing up initial contacts. The representative even connected him with a mentor who had experience in Jack's industry. As Jack left the SBA office, he felt like he had just hit the jackpot. He couldn't believe that he had access to all of these resources for free. He went home that day feeling more confident and motivated than ever before. Over the next few months, Jack worked tirelessly on his business, using all of the resources the SBA had to offer. He attended workshops, met with his mentor regularly, and even got a loan to help him with his startup costs. Before he knew it, Jack's business was thriving. He had a loyal customer base, and he was making a name for himself in the industry. He knew that none of this would have been possible without the free resources he had accessed through the SBA. Looking back, Jack realized that he had almost given up on his dream before he discovered the SBA. He was so grateful that he had taken the time to research and find the resources he needed to succeed. Jack's story is a reminder that no matter where you are in the world, there are free resources available to help you achieve your dreams. You just need to take the first step and get connected. Who knows, maybe you'll be the next big success story. Chapter 2. Lena had always dreamed of starting her own business. She had a clear vision of what she wanted to create, a boutique coffee shop that not only served delicious coffee but also provided a cozy atmosphere for people to relax and socialize. But she knew that starting a business was no small feat, and she needed a solid plan to make it a reality. Lena started researching and reading up on the process of creating a business plan. She discovered that a business plan was essential for outlining her goals, identifying potential problems, and providing a roadmap for achieving success. She also learned that having a well-written business plan could help her secure funding from investors and banks. Excited and eager to get started, Lena got to work on her business plan. She began with the executive summary, crafting a vivid and engaging story that described her vision for the boutique coffee shop. She focused on the problem she was trying to solve, a lack of cozy and inviting coffee shops in the area, and how her solution would stand out in a crowded market. Next, Lena moved on to the more concrete and objective parts of the plan. She researched the coffee industry, gathering data and statistics to support her claims. 
she identified potential competitors and developed a marketing strategy to set her business apart. Lena also included financial projections and a budget, ensuring that her business was financially viable and sustainable. She knew that investors would be looking for solid financials, and she didn't want to leave anything to chance. After several weeks of hard work, Lena's business plan was complete. She felt confident and ready to present it to potential investors. She met with a local bank and a few private investors, sharing her vision and her plan for success. They were impressed by her thoroughness and passion and ultimately decided to invest in her business. With the funding secured, Lena's boutique coffee shop became a reality. The cozy atmosphere, friendly staff, and delicious coffee made it an instant hit, and it quickly became a favorite among locals. Lena's business plan had laid the foundation for her success, and she was thrilled to see her dreams come to life. Chapter 3. Jack who had always dreamt of starting his own business. He had a great idea for a company that he believed would revolutionize the industry. However, he was not prepared for the paperwork that came along with starting a business. Jack thought that the legal paperwork would be the easiest part of the process. He figured that all he needed to do was file a few forms and he would be ready to go. However, as he soon discovered, there was much more to it than he had anticipated. Jack quickly realized that he needed to take care of his incorporation paperwork and other licensing requirements from the outset. If he didn't, he would risk facing fines or even having his business shut down later on down the line. He started by doing some research on his own and discovered that there were several different corporate structures to choose from. He learned about the advantages and disadvantages of each and realized that he needed to make a decision on which structure was right for his business. Jack decided to start with a sole proprietorship since it was the simplest form of incorporation. However, he soon realized that he was putting himself at risk by being personally liable for any business liabilities or debts incurred. He then looked into an LLC, which was a little more complicated but offered personal asset protection. After doing some more research, he realized that an S-Corp might be a better option for him since certain investors, lawyers, and advisors preferred to work with that structure. Finally, Jack considered incorporating as AC Corporation since he wanted to one day raise capital by selling shares of his business. However, he realized that the increased tax burden might not be worth it for his business at this time. Throughout the process, Jack learned the importance of taking care of his incorporation paperwork and other licensing requirements from the outset. He also learned that it was essential to do his own research and follow up with a lawyer to get a full picture of the pros and cons of each corporate structure. In the end, Jack successfully incorporated his business as an S-Corp and obtained all the necessary licenses and insurance for his industry. He was able to focus on running his business and making it a success, knowing that he had taken care of all the legal requirements from the outset. Chapter 4. Max had a brilliant idea for a product that he knew customers would love, but he didn't know how to turn his idea into a finished product in the hands of a customer. Max decided to seek advice from a successful small business owner named Mr. Pesso, who ran an ice cream shop in New York. Mr. Pesso advised Max to focus on process management of his operations. He explained that small businesses typically have small margins, so the successful ones pay close attention to every aspect of how the company is run. Mr. Pesso suggested that Max use observation and standardization to his advantage when designing his operational workflows. Max followed Mr. Pesso's advice and began observing and documenting every aspect of his operational processes. He recorded everything from sourcing materials to inventory management, distribution, and sales processes. Max noticed that there were inefficiencies in his production process that were causing delays and increasing costs. Using the data he had gathered, Max identified the root causes of the problems and began standardizing his workflows. He systematized his processes, ensuring that everything was done the same way every time. Max's team was able to work more efficiently, and his production costs decreased. As Max's business grew, he used the data he had gathered to adapt to changing customer demands. He was able to observe trends and make informed decisions about which products to offer and when to offer them. Max's business became more nimble, and he was able to stay ahead of his competitors. Thanks to Mr. Pesso's advice, 
Max was able to turn his idea into a successful business. He continued to observe his systems and simplify his workflows, just like Mr. Pesso had advised him to do. Max's business thrived, and he became a successful small business owner, just like Mr. Pesso. Chapter 5. Alex owned a coffee shop in a bustling city. Alex loved coffee and wanted to share that love with others through his business. However, he soon realized that there were many other coffee shops in the area, and he needed to find a way to stand out and create a loyal customer base. One day, Alex came across an article that stated that creating a signature experience was a great way to generate buzz and keep customers coming back. He was inspired by the example of Wild Rumpus, a children's bookstore that had cats and chickens running around, aquariums in the bathrooms, and whimsical exploration areas. Alex realized that he could create a similar experience in his coffee shop. He started by adding a few small touches, like fresh flowers on each table and unique coffee art. Then, he decided to offer a free mini pastry with every coffee purchase. To make the experience even more special, he started hosting monthly coffee tastings where customers could try different blends and learn about the roasting process. As word of mouth spread, more and more customers started coming to Alex's coffee shop. They loved the welcoming atmosphere, the delicious coffee, and the special touches that made the experience memorable. Alex realized that he needed to expand his brand and publicize it even more. He started by building up his web presence, creating a website that shared his story and featured photos of his unique coffee shop. He also invested in a graphic designer and a photographer to establish a professional brand identity. Finally, he leveraged social media, posting about new inventory, weekly specials, and promotions. Thanks to his signature experience and strong brand identity, Alex's coffee shop became a local favorite. He was even able to sponsor community events and receive free press coverage in local papers. Alex realized that by creating a signature experience, he was able to form a bond of trust with his customers and create a loyal customer base. In the end, Alex learned that building a brand is about more than just selling a product. It's about creating a unique experience that resonates with your customers and forms a lasting connection. By putting love and creativity into his business, Alex was able to create a thriving coffee shop that brought joy to his customers every day. Chapter 6. Rachel had recently started her own catering business. She was passionate about cooking and had always dreamed of owning her own restaurant. Rachel's business had been successful, and she had developed a loyal customer base. One day, Rachel noticed that her customers' tastes were changing. They were requesting more plant-based options, and Rachel realized that there was a growing trend towards vegan and vegetarian diets. Rachel decided to adapt her business and began offering more plant-based options on her menu. Rachel's new plant-based options were a hit with her customers, and she started to attract new customers who were looking for healthy and sustainable food options. Rachel continued to observe consumer trends and look for new opportunities. When the pandemic hit and many people were forced to stay at home, Rachel began offering meal kits and delivery options. Thanks to Rachel's ability to observe consumer trends and be flexible in her approach to business, she was able to turn a potentially challenging situation into an opportunity for growth. Rachel's business continued to thrive, and she realized that her ability to adapt and evolve was key to her success. She never stopped looking for new opportunities and remained committed to providing her customers with the best possible service. Summary. If you're itching to embark on the journey of starting your own small business, you're in the company of brave and bold individuals. Self-made entrepreneurs are trailblazers who perceive challenges in the world and are determined to contribute to the solution. They range from artists seeking to turn their passions into a profession to those motivated to give back to their community. Yet, what sets them apart is their unwavering drive to build something remarkable from scratch. To transform your entrepreneurial spark into a flourishing business, you must approach it with a practical mindset. First, connect with your local small and medium-sized business SMB, community and leverage their free business resources. Next, craft a comprehensive business plan, incorporate your business, and establish consistent workflows. Then. Concentrate on creating a signature experience that fosters customer loyalty. Lastly, remain adaptable and observant, 
and your business will be primed for long-term success. Finally, the insights and knowledge I gained from reading Self-Made Boss were phenomenal. I highly recommend it. Thank you for taking the time to watch, and if you found value in this video, be sure to hit that like button and subscribe to my channel for more great content. Trust me, you won't regret it.